Um, you may not be able to see it, but at some point when we look around my shop and look at the tool board in this workspace, you're going to see a light. There's a light right here. And that light is there for a reason. When I look at this fretboard, I'm looking at reflected light. I'm looking at the light that's coming down and it's coming back into my eye. That lets me see the surface of these frets. When you're looking at a surface, a painted surface, polished surface, or a filed or milled surface, you use reflected light. It's uh, something that's known in the jewelry world and in the lapidary world, both of worlds of, worlds of which I have lived. I was a silversmith and a stone cutter for a long time uh, before I drifted into this. Um, what we've done is that this file has created a pattern of lines that are running in this direction. And you can see them. The file has created lines, very small, but uh, little textures that run in this direction, like very fine grain. And you can't see it that well, um, because the file is a pretty good flat file. Um, we're going to now, we file the tops off these frets, so they're, they go like curve, flat, curve. Well, they need to be crowned. And that's where this tool comes from. This is the only tool to buy. Don't buy any other tool. This is the medium to wide Stuart McDonald. It's a 4491. I will use the wide. There's this, what this is, is that it has the curve of the fret, the crown of the fret, right down here. On this side, there's one, but it's tighter. It's for a medium crown fret, a fret that's narrower. I'm going to use the wide. Now, you can start at either end, start wherever you want. And some of these I barely touch with a file. I'm going to go over them anyway. This guitar, um, what you'll find in some cases, the guitar has been played so much that the string has created depressions in the fret. Well, you've got to level the frets until you've gotten rid of those depressions. In this case, we don't have to worry about it. They're not there. Um, I'm going to do these. Now, the technique here is that I'm only going in one direction for the finish cut. And it's actually polishing this fret. Um, it's a good, the file has a good set of teeth on it. It's cutting really well. Um, pretty soon, I'm going to get in. I'm also removing a teeny bit of dimple from strings that have cut into the fret. Right now, I'm basically just doing these frets to make them look like the ones that are going to get recrowned. Now, this third fret, I can see lines where the file has flattened the top of the fret. I'm looking at those lines, and I'm using reflected light as my guide. I am selectively removing any spot that shows the lines of the file going that way. That the use of reflected light and removing the linear pattern and replacing it with one that's 90 degrees to it is your guide to when to stop and what parts. In other words, if the, it's flat more in the middle, I'll file more in the middle. But as you can see, I'm going to remove this because it's in the way. Um, it doesn't take that long. One would think that this was going to be a really labor-intensive process. Well, sometimes it is if you filed the PP out of these things because the frets were all over the place, then um, you might have to do a lot of filing. But as you can see, we're, more than, we're halfway done already. And again, if this isn't done, the guitar is not what it could be. Um, most factory made guitars, they depend on the fretboard being flat, level. They press the frets in, hope they've got their process down, and ship the guitar. If it plays with medium action and doesn't buzz, they figure they're done. Um, the cheaper the guitar, 
Like the Samick Corporation makes a million guitars a year, at least a million guitars a year. If you think of that as one factory, do the math and you'll see that there's a guitar coming out every five or ten minutes. The time spent, the total time spent in building the guitar may be 20 or 30 minutes. They do not have time to do this. So when you buy your guitar, give it to somebody. Ask them to show you their feeler gauge and straight edge and fret crowning file. And if they've got that equipment, do a fret mill. The mill is the filing flat. Recrown is where we are now. And polish. Polish is optional. This file is so good. I have another old one that I can burnish the frets with. I'm removing a lot of material. What I'm doing is watching a movie frame by frame. And when it gets close, I do the last cuts only in one direction. Ryan's getting the fret job for free here. But he's not learning. That's okay. We're going to... I uh, just caused a little roughness there. That chatter telegraphed itself into the fret, but I removed it. This job went real easy. If I wasn't talking and I was rocking here, let's say I could do the whole thing in 30 minutes. While a fret mill recon and polish is worth 80 bucks, I tend to charge 30 depending on how long it took. If it's really bad, maybe 50. But you can still make 30 bucks an hour and everybody is happy. This is where we start. We're going to end up doing a setup, which may mean bowing the neck, getting some neck relief up here. neck is uh, got block inlays emulates the true Les Paul guitar. I'm going to turn this around to get to these frets. When you get down here you're going to do half this way and half that way. Luckily we didn't have to touch much. This is an indie video so there's going to be some roughness in the camera. We're actually phonying that roughness up just to make it look like an indie video. Haha, <laughs> no worries. See, I'm doing the half that arches down. I also went to this side because the cutaway gives me access. Again, I'm looking at reflected light. I'm going to polish this fret here. Oops, wrong side. Um, there are things that I call bibs that I would tend to use. We'll talk, it'll be a piece of cardstock. This is cardstock, it's very thick. I would cut it like this, set it here, so that there'd be no chance of damaging the finish should I slip. But I'm promising myself not to slip. I like working on my own guitars because I can uh, take liberties. I repair most of the guitars in the Verde Valley. I do the repair for the music store, and there's only one music store. I've repaired a couple thousand guitars in the past 10 years or so. In the first couple of hundred, I only did the measurement at the middle of the neck, and then one day when I had trouble with string buzz near the outsides of the fretboard, I realized that the necks could change radically from one side to the other. So I do that process in three phases, down the middle to the left and right, and as I said, sometimes I will check every string and still find
some disparities. Now this had a problem where one of the frets has a line in it. I'm not going to take that into account now. We're going to deal with that separately. The switch is loose and it's also getting in the way. For purposes of this video, I'm going to deal with this owie and this fret after we're done shooting this particular process. Again, this is the heart of the process. This switch is really bugging me. I'm going to have to deal with it. Let's pretend the switch isn't there and that I'm done. We're going to wind this video up here shortly. Um, what we're going to do, we're not going to be done until we've taken the crud off the fretboard. Uh, most fretboards, like with pearl dot inlays, I'll take triple O or four O steel wool and clean the crud off. In that case, technically, it's going to break the shine on these inlays. So what we're going to do is mask the inlays with masking tape, then be careful about removing the tape when we're taking the crud off. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to take, this is 3-0, -O, triple O steel wool, that's zero, zero, zero. Um, in this case, after I mask these, I have the option of running 320 sandpaper over everything to further polish these frets. From there, go with steel wool, maybe even 400 if you want, even 600 if you want, and then steel wool over between each fret. Remember, these are going to be masked. Then we'll go this way to clean it further. Also, I'm checking to see if there are any rough edges resulting from flattening this. If the frets are sticking out, these are fine. In some cases, you're going to have to go to a process of removing any burrs or any projections that come from this. We're going to do that on another video. Um, so what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to finish the cleaning this fretboard and then go into setting up the guitar and um, see what happens. So I'm going to sign off on this first chunk of video for guitar recording.